functions in JavaScript for absolute beginners. So without functions, your program just runs from start to end. It just runs sequentially. I mean, it, might not, it might have if statements in there, but your code essentially, you could think of it as being one giant monolithic chunk of code. But what if we wanted to reuse a bit of that code? What if we wanted to take some of the code you've written and put it in its own box, which we would call upon at some point? This is the world of the function. So let's start by writing a really simple function. So we write the word function because, hey, there's some logic to JavaScript. Then we're going to give that function a name and I'm going to call it my function. Because so you know it's a function and you know it's the one that I've created. We then use parenthesis and then we use the curly brackets like that. And then here I'm going to console log and I'm going to console log my function was called. There we go. So now we have this bit of code on line one to three, which is a function which is just going to console log when it's called. So then I can then call that function. I can say console log my function. And if you notice, I've used the parenthesis again because that tells the tells JavaScript that I want or, or the JavaScript runtime it tells it that I want to actually run that function. I'm not just talking about the function's name. So I'm actually saying execute that bit of code. Just so you can see that works. There we go. Uh, my function was called. So that's a function in its simplest sense, but it's not useful. I mean, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't give us anything back. It doesn't, there's, there's no real purpose to it other than as a demonstration of the world's most simple function. So let's send that function something useful. Let's make the function multiply two numbers. So let's, let's rename the function. Um, let's call it square, because that's probably most logical. And I'm going to rename my function up here to square. I'm going to send it two numbers. I'm going to send it 10 and 7. So when I say send it, what these are called are parameters or arguments. This is data that's being given to a function so the function can do something useful. The beauty of a function is later on, we, we might want to send it some different data and it do its work on that data and then give us the answer back. So think of a fun function back as my shop example. I say to somebody, go to the shops and get me some milk and the person who goes to shops brings me back milk. They are performing a function, as in getting me milk. And that's what we're doing here. We say to a bit of code, here's something, go do some work, and then give me something back. Now, I don't always have to give a function something, and I don't always have to get something back, even though that's a typical scenario. So I'm giving my function 10 and 7. But how does my function access that 10 and 7? Well, on line 1, we need to declare the data that we're going to receive. So I'm going to call it number one and I'm going to call it number two. This could be anything you want. It's just what you're going to call them. Let's get rid of the console log. Let's make a new variable called results. And we're going to make it equal number one times number two. Number two. So as with, as with most languages, the what we call the operators inside them that we actually uh, uh, the standard sort of operators that we use on a calculator we want to add two things we've got the plus there we want to multiply put the star there we want to take away we use the minus symbol and um, that's all you know really kind of standard mathsy kind of stuff um, mathsy kind of stuff i don't know if that's the right thing to say um so var result is number one times number two let's just console log that result, just to check that it is in fact number one times number two, because if it isn't, that will be embarrassing. Okay, 70. So we've sent it 10, we've sent it seven, seven times 10 is 70. So that is really good because we have the answer we expect. But how do we get the answer out of the function? How do we get this function to give us back the thing that we've asked for, which is the square of two numbers? Well, for this, we use the return keyword. So we are going to return the results. 
So that means now that we give square 10 and 7, square squares them, it, it times one by the other, and then it returns the result of that, that maths. Which means that the console log on line 6, that's console logging square, sent 10 and 7, is now going to spit out the answer without showing anything nasty on the console. So there we go, 70. So we have this encapsulated coding square. We have coding square that we don't care what it does really. All we know is that we say to square, square 10 and 7, and we get the answer back. That is the brilliance encapsulation. You don't have to know what's going on inside square. You just have to call upon it to do some work. There's a slightly nicer way of writing that. Um, I'm declaring result on line two, and then I'm putting number one and number two inside it. Why don't I just return the answer rather than putting it inside results? So instead of return results, what if I take number one and number two, and I just put them in there directly? I just return the answer. Return number one times number two. I should get exactly the same answer out on the console. 70, perfect. That's for, for a really simple function that only has one line inside it, why not just return the answer directly? It makes much more sense. So let's have another console log just so you can see the reusability factor of a function. We could square and let's square 199 and 55. So now we're using that function we wrote above twice. We're going to get two answers out. There you go, 70 and 10,945. So this reusability is going to save you time because if you were writing that normally, if you were writing that without functions, what you would do is you would be repeating that code, that times in one by the other. But now we just call upon the code that we've already written. That's genius. That's, as a software developer, there's so much to do and so little time that if you, can, if you can use mechanisms that are going to save you time and make you be able to reuse things you've already done, then hey, you know, that's a winner for me. Software developers, you know, we like copy and paste. We like not having to type things out needlessly. And we want our program to be efficient. We want to make sure our code, um, that we haven't got this huge amount of code with equivalent amounts of repetition in it. We want to be able to write efficient stuff that's small, that executes quickly, that has less bugs in it. One of the properties of a function is that it will have less bugs because you're using it in lots of places. If you repeat code in lots of places and some of those have got bugs in, you're less likely to notice. So anytime you're writing code you've previously written, you should think maybe I should go and actually start putting it inside a function encapsulating it. There are other ways of encapsulating code, which we will get to at some point. But for now, functions are the easiest way of encapsulating and reusing things. In the next video, we're going to look at the different types of variables and to touch on scope.